Hey guys, my name is Francisco Hernandez and today I want to show you how I remove wrinkles on clothing and smooth skin on people using frequency separation in Photoshop. The very first step that you want to do is make two copies of your photo. You can either hit Command or Control J to do those copies or you can actually just drag this layer over here on this plus little square over here by the trash can. So I'm going to just do that just because it was fun to make that first copy. And now you want to kind of just keep your layers a little bit organized and I'm going to rename this first background copy as color. And then this top one, I'm gonna rename it to texture. Now with this top texture layer selected, you want to hold down shift and click on the color layer. That's gonna select both of those different layers. And now you can either hit command or control G to group them together, or you can just simply drag those two over here on this folder. And just to keep it again, a little bit organized, I'm gonna rename it FS for frequency separation. Now I'm going to go ahead and click the bottom layer, the texture layer to make sure that it's selected and then disable the top texture layer so I can just really focus on the color layer. Now with the color layer selected, I want to go ahead and go to filter, go to blur, go to Gaussian blur. And now I'm going to click somewhere on the clothing and then I want to go to something really low so you can see a lot of the texture. You actually want to keep the radius at somewhere between four to five, I think is a good Kind of safe bet for 42 megapixel files i think if you're shooting around 24 it's a good around three and if you have something like 61 megapixels i think seven or eight would work really good but you basically want to have a little bit of blur in the clothing so i'm going to just keep it at five and it's pretty good here so i'm going to click ok now with that color layer blurred i'm going to go ahead and just now work on the texture layer so i'm going to click on texture i'm going to enable it this time and now I'm gonna to go to image, apply image, and then where it says layer here, you want to make sure that you are clicking on texture or color. You're gonna keep the RGB or the channel at RGB. You're gonna keep the blending to not multiply or anything else, but you want it to be on subtract. You do want the opacity at 100, scale to offset 128, and then you're gonna click okay. Now you just need to change the blending mode of the texture layer from normal to linear light. Now that we did that, let's go ahead and select the color layer again. And now we're going to get the mixer brush, which is going to be over here in the tools. You want to hold down, click on the brush tool, and then you should see it over here. I actually made a shortcut to the mixer brush, but you guys should still see it as the shortcut B. So that's why I had you guys click over here and now you can see the mixer brush. So let's go ahead and just select that now. And from here, you're basically going to copy the settings that I have here on top. You might see something like this, a color or a pattern here. You want to make sure you hit this arrow and select clean brush. Make sure you have this selected. And the reason why it says custom here is because I had custom settings in the wet, load, mix, and flow settings. And now that we finally have the correct settings and we have the correct layer selected, I'm gonna zoom in on the pants, smoothening those wrinkles on the pants. It is very important to change the size of the brush. You don't want to have a very big brush when you're trying to paint somewhere small. So definitely change the size of the brush to wherever you're gonna be painting. The shortcut on the keyboard is going to be right next to the P, that open and close bracket. That's what I use to change the size of the brush. So let me just go ahead and start. You definitely want to make sure that your brush strokes are going to be in the same kind of line. You don't want to paint this color over here into the shadow area. It doesn't make sense. So definitely keep it, the brush strokes along the same shadows and highlights. Right now I just did something very, very simple, but you can actually see the before and after of that very two second quick adjustment in that color layer. And honestly, it's as simple as that. Just make sure that you don't paint anything too weird. You don't wanna make this shadow over here. You don't want it to be into this area where there's no shadow because then you start to kind of create unrealistic shadows. So I'm gonna just go ahead and just take that back off and then start to paint how exactly I want the clothes to look smoother. So let me just go ahead and just zoom through a little bit of me doing the different brush strokes and then you guys can see exactly how it looks like after a short amount of time, like less than a minute. So definitely hasn't been just a one minute of me doing this, but I wanted to stop real quickly and tell you guys that sometimes I just click and I just go back and forth and that does a good job of smoothening that wrinkle. So I just wanted to let you guys know that and then I'll just give myself another 30 seconds and then I'll show you guys the results.
Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and just zoom out and then show you guys exactly how it looks like the before and the after. It was about maybe two, two and a half minutes of doing that. But again, it's kind of quick results for how dramatic of a change it is. So you can definitely use frequency separation to smooth the wrinkles on the clothing. But I wanted to show you guys really, really quickly how I smooth the skin using the same thing. So let me go ahead and just zoom in on the face. So now I'm going to go ahead and get the lasso tool, which is going to be over here, or you can hit L. It should be that shortcut. And then you're going to make sure that the feather is a good amount, like 15. And then you're going to just basically select areas of the skin that you want to smooth it. So I'm just going to grab a big chunk over here on this cheek and a little bit on the lower of the chin. And then now I'm going to go ahead and make sure that color is selected and then go to filter, go to blur, go to Gaussian blur. And now instead of having it just at five, we're going to go to something like, let's say 20. Okay. That's too much. So let's go to something like 12, 14 and 14 looks pretty good. So I'm going to show you guys the before and after, and now it does look pretty soft. So now I'm going to click okay. And it's pretty nice results. And from here, you basically can just select different areas of the skin that you want to soften. And then after you select the area, you can either go to filter, go to blur, Gaussian blur, and either adjust the level and click OK. Or if you feel like 14 is good wherever you want it, then you can go ahead and just go to filter. And it, the last thing that you did with the filter, which is, you know, adding 14 radius, you can probably just click this over here on top or use that shortcut alt control F. So it did smooth in this area here where I selected. And then now I'm just going to go ahead and select this area over here. And I believe it said Alt Control F. So now I can go ahead and just click that and it will soften the skin wherever I select it and then using that shortcut. So let me just go ahead and just do a little bit more of that using the lasso tool, selecting the skin and then using Gaussian Burn and see how the results look like. So now that we're done with smoothing the skin and smoothing the wrinkles, let me show you the final before and after. This is after. Here's before, here's after. And that's pretty much it. I hope this tutorial wasn't too long. I hope you guys uh, learned something from it and that it helped you out. And for now, I'll just say take care and I'll see you in the very next video.